Welcome to FinSuite Cookie Consent for Webflow. I'm Joe Krug, founder of FinSuite. I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about cookie consent in Webflow. Welcome to the opt-in, opt-out, walkthrough tutorial. In this video, we cover option two and option three in the FinSuite Cookie Consent for Webflow library. Here we have option two, opt out of cookies, and option three, opt into cookies. These have very, very similar setups. There's a few small differences, but not enough to be different videos. So this will cover both options and show you the difference and why you would choose one over the other. Let's do a quick review before we jump into the steps. Option two is allowing the user to opt out of cookies, which means we first will give them cookies without their consent, and then they have the option to opt out of them after we've given them. So this is not GDPR compliant. They get them and they're not saying that they want them yet. So this is opt out. They get them and then they can opt out. Option three, they have to specifically opt in before we give them the cookies. So they come, load the page. We're not giving them cookies. They can view the site for days, for hours, for months. And until they click accept, until they allow those cookies, we will not give it to them. So they have to opt in. And then in both options, we can add the preference manager. You have to add the preference manager for option three. And that's going to allow the user to switch between their original consent options. So let's get into it. We're going to be going through the option three walkthrough because that's what most people are going to be implementing. And if you're not sure which one to implement, just go with option three. That is the GDPR compliant version. All right, here we go. Read this if you're interested in the topic. It's going to cover what I just said in text version. Step one, build the cookie banner. We're going to build a cookie banner with a preferences, deny, and accept button. Let's go into a blank Webflow build. I'm going to go and add a div block here. I'm going to use the naming that we use in our clonable build. If you want to copy paste from our clonable, go ahead. This is the step-by-step -step if you want to do it custom or if you really want to understand how everything works. I'm going to use our prefix system here and it's going to be the banner component. I'm going to go and copy paste this prefix for the banner. Now, why are we using this type of prefix and this type of naming? First, we do not want anything to conflict with anything else on your website. So if I went to go and put this as container, you may have a container on the site already and we don't want that to conflict. So we want this to be very clear and we wanna add this banner term in here because we're going to be building other components throughout this tutorial. We'll build the manager and we will build the preferences. So if we don't specify banner, we may have some confusion. So we'll go ahead and we'll call this the container as well. Container, and let's get this on the bottom of the screen. And let's start to add some color and some sizing to it. There we go. We have a fixed position on the bottom. Let's go and add a bit of padding here. This is not a design course. This is not even a Webflow building course. This is how to implement this system. So let's go into the container. Let's go and add some awesome styles. I'll go and apply auto here to make sure this is centered on the screen. And I'm going to give it a width of 100%. Let's give it a max width here of 900. And inside this banner container, I'm going to go and put a text block. This text block is going to have the messaging that we need to tell the user what this banner is for. So I'll go back into the docs and I'm going to go copy and paste this directly. Please be aware that you absolutely need a privacy policy link inside this message. If you want to be GDPR compliant, you need a privacy policy that gives the user more information than this little snippet of text. Great. Now I'm going to go up to the FSCC banner container and I'm going to now add a div and call this the FS lost my copy, FSCC, 
banner. Uh, let's do buttons. Let's go and add some layout to this. So I'll go up to the container. I'm going to give it a flex. Uh, let's go and center that here. And I'm going to give a bit of spacing here as we make way for our buttons. So we, we are going to go and add, not in there, we're going to add a preferences, a deny, and accept. I'll go ahead and do that right now. And we'll follow the same style here. I'm going to do a text link. I'm going to do a button and a button. Cool. We're going to also flex this. We're going to center this. And we're going to make sure that this does not shrink or grow. Excellent. Now let's go and let's go and whoops. Lost my paste, my copy again. Cool. I'll make sure I grab this for this naming. We'll call this the let's call this the button link. I like that. Let's call this the button main and we have the same here. Uh, actually, you know, we're just going to call this button. So I'm going to go rename this. We're going to give an add on class to these to, to change the style a bit. Okay. So let's, let's make this open preferences. Let's make this the deny, not so aggressive. And let's make this the allow. Great. So the first thing we're going to do, let's make this the primary button. We'll give it some styles on this base class here. I'm going to go and apply this color here. And I'm going to apply a bit of this styling. And let's see. Let's go and add a bit of spacing here. Let's do this eight. Great. Okay, cool. And yeah, I think that's good. Let's go and now reverse this. Let's do this FSCC banner. Let's call this the deny. We get to inherit our padding. This is great. Good for us. And now we're going to, let's say, make this a little bit more ugly. Yeah. Great. And let's make this a little bit more happy. Oh yeah, look how happy this is. Cool. All right, we have the button link. Let's add a little bit of coolness here. We'll do a style on the bottom and let's give it a... Uh... No, let's give it this blue here. Okay, cool. We're going to blue it up. Great. And we're not going to do this and we are going to leave it like this. Great. Not that pretty, but it's going to work. Again, this is not a design tutorial. This is a tutorial on how to set this up. If you want something that looks nice, go to our clonable build. We spent time making that look nice. Okay, cool. So let's get into this. I want to create a little bit more space here because this is just not spacey enough for me. And there we go. Okay, so we have built our banner. Uh, stay simple or have fun. We certainly didn't have too much fun here, but remember, you can do anything you want here. There's no limitations for the style that you need to, to choose. Now we go and add attributes to important elements. For opt-in, we're required to add three attributes. We have our banner, allow, and deny. We're also going to do preferences. So first, let's do the FSCC banner. I'm going to go to the banner component. This is the outer parent of everything we just did. And I'm going to go in here for an FSCC banner. Then we're going to go into our accept or allow. We're using the term allow here officially. FSCC allow. We'll go in here to FSCC allow. Also know that these can be divs. They do not need to be links. They do not need to be buttons. We're choosing buttons here because by default it has the right pointer state. So we think that's good for anybody coming in here 
as a beginner. But if you want this as a div, go ahead, div it up. If you want to link block it, if you want to do whatever, do whatever. And then we're going to add something to our deny. Let's see what that is. FSCC deny. FSCC allow. FSCC deny. FSCC deny. Cool. And the next one is preferences. FSCC open preferences. Now this is optional, but we do really recommend it. We see the open, we see a preferences option in pretty much most GDPR compliant tools. Since we do allow the user to change it after, it's not technically required, but go for it. It's a good option here. Open preferences. Great. Thank you for watching opt in, opt out walkthrough. And you're not done yet. Don't think you can walk away and you have a cookie compliance system. We have to get into the preference manager. So please check out the next video that goes over the preference manager, how to set up those attributes, the structure, and then we get into the scripts. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching and let's talk preferences. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinSuite videos to keep learning Webflow.